Welcome everybody to another episode of the Family Business Podcast by Thought of What Magazine. My name is James Lee and it's a pleasure to have you guys back with us again. So it's been a while since we have uploaded a new episode, but we actually have a very good reason. If you notice, I am speaking to you alone from our studio, and that is because my partner in crime, editor-in-chief Ramya Alagami, is gallivanting around Europe, speaking to family businesses and experts from all over. And for our first stop, we travel to Scotland, where, <laughs> sorry, I have uh, no idea how to do a Scottish accent, um, but we traveled to Scotland where she had a chance to speak to a leading expert on family businesses. And with that, I will let Ramya take it from here, speaking to you live from Edinburgh. Enjoy. Sitting here at the Queen Margaret University in Edinburgh with Dr. Claire Seaman, who is the leader of the Family and Smaller Enterprises Research Group here at the university. Hello, Claire. Thank you very much for having us. How are you today? I'm very well, and uh, indeed, thank you for coming to visit Queen Margaret and for coming to hear a little bit more about our research work with family businesses and also about the strides forward that Queen Margaret University is making for in family business education for Scotland. Wonderful, we're looking forward to that. What we're also very curious to learn about today, Claire, is to learn more about Scottish family businesses in general. So we're here to pick your brain to understand more about the landscape that Scottish family businesses are facing politically, economically and socially. So we're going to ask you a few uh, hard questions maybe to, to answer and you just like uh, let us know give us some insights about uh, what what you found out through your research and what you found out through your interactions with family businesses over the years. So, first question, what does the what does the family business field here look like? I mean, are we having are we seeing a density of family businesses in Scotland? Are there many of them? Are there few? Absolutely. Um, It's worth stating from the beginning that family business research in Scotland is a relatively young field. So there are some things we know very clearly. We know that, depending on definition, somewhere between 65 and 80 percent of our businesses are family owned and run. We are fairly sure that in rural areas, the economic importance of family businesses is actually rather higher than that. And Scotland's an interesting country. If you drew a line between Inverness and Fort William across the map and looked north of that line, you'd find areas that are really quite sparsely populated and where there are much fewer in the way of big business, chain stores, things like that. So we're fairly sure that many of our rural areas are in fact very dependent on family businesses. But then it's our it's our role really to research and to find good evidence to support that. We're also fairly sure that in Scotland we have key sectors of where family businesses have a particular importance and they include some of the Scottish Government's economic priority sectors like food and drink and tourism. But over and above that, we also know that many of our biggest family businesses are in areas such as construction and transport and food and drink. So it's really quite a diverse picture, the the population that we're researching. Fantastic. And and can you tell us a little bit more after having interacted with them for Mm -hmm. so many years and researched them for so many years? What do you find are sort of the common challenges that you see that Scottish family businesses are facing? Absolutely. I mean... Researching family businesses in Scotland is interesting because in many ways the challenges they face are those that the wider body of research would indicate. So there's things like innovation, succession, resilience in changing economic climate, which, you know, those are common to family businesses everywhere. Um, And then we have some specific things that are happening in the UK at the moment, um, which include Brexit and the opportunities and the challenges that that presents. And one of the possibilities of that, of course, is being that um, Scotland may go forward for a second independence referendum. We don't know yet whether that will happen. So it's a very interesting point in time, actually, as you just mentioned, right? So with facing Brexit and like the, even just the potential or the possibility of an independence of Scotland is a very, well, you know, to some frightening, to others exciting prospect. 
What do you feel will be the role of family businesses if there ever were to come an independence of Scotland? Do you feel like family businesses will be a, playing an important part in this, uh, in, in making Scotland a viable independent nation? I mean, I think it's a really interesting question because to some extent, political uncertainty brings uncertainty in the business environment. And we're fairly sure that whatever the political changes that come along, there will be opportunities and there will be challenges for family businesses and they'll be very different for different businesses. What I would say is that we do know from our research that family businesses are the economic bedrock of Scotland. Mm -hmm. And whether Scotland continues as part of the UK or whether it becomes independent, the economy still matters and businesses who play a key economic role will be absolutely vital to that future. Um, what I think is interesting looking at the environment at the moment is the extent to which businesses are aware of uncertainty, but clearly nobody really knows how quite a lot of that is going to mm -hmm. work out. So a lot of it is about resilience and innovation in the face of quite deep political uncertainty locally. So it's also interesting because not only does this uncertainty come at, at this incredibly volatile time, globe, time globally, but also there's, of course, this transition now of the millennial generation actually really taking over the reins in terms of leadership in, in, in the family businesses at the moment. So, you know, with all those transitions colliding at the same time, um, where do you see the opportunities like Scottish family businesses have right now? Do you feel like these are inflection points or do you feel like, you know, it's actually business as usual, family businesses will always come across such times? Or do you also feel like everybody else seems to that it's quite a special moment in time where everything seems to collide? Well, I mean, I think it's very fair to say um, that there is an unusual level of political uncertainty at present. So to some extent, yes, those things do collide. For the millennial generation, I think each generation faces new challenges. And part of our role at Queen Margaret University is around designing education to help them go out and meet those challenges. We can't know exactly what the changes will bring, but we can know that for businesses, having robust governance structures that help a family manage the business, having ways of creating good innovative products and services that will create value for the business mm -hmm. going forward, whether that's value sales in the UK or whether that means exporting. We know that these principles will continue to be useful mm -hmm. and that's rather what we try to build education around for the future. Interesting. And I think, so you're in this very interesting position also to tell us a little bit more about the future of education itself. And I think this is a, this is a very important, um, again, here also, again, a fork in the road where education obviously can become, um, well, relatively obsolete or uh, more relevant than ever, I guess, in terms of like what it has to offer to people in these times of uncertainty. So where do you see the role of, say, like, you know, a, a research group such as yours in, in, in shaping or supporting the, 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 the business community out there? And, and how do you go about it? I mean, the role of a research group is an interesting one. What I would say is that if we start at the other end, if we look at what we want from education, we want business education to be evidence-based. So what we want from a research group is the best knowledge that we can have about family businesses in Scotland and the best lessons that we can learn from researchers in different countries who have faced similar but slightly different challenges and found good routes through. So the role of a research group is primarily about creating the best knowledge that we can. Once we have created that knowledge, the next part of our role is to use that to impact upon the business community. That means finding good solutions and good ways of getting that knowledge out in a form that is digestible for the business community. And in many ways, at that stage, what you want is the right education in the right place at the right time. Now, there's no one size fits all. So some of that will be around developing specific programs of education. 
But the Queen Margaret University also works with Family Business United in Scotland who have put together an education pathway. And one of the pieces of thinking behind the education pathway is that you've got, for example, seminars for people who want to dip in for an afternoon and think about things. Mm -hmm. And you carry through the pathway at different levels of intensity all the way through to the specialist master's programmes that we designed at Queen Margaret University. And in fact, we now have PhD and professional doctoral students looking at family business practice. So we have a very wide range of opportunities and the idea is to let people dip in and see and to pick up the opportunities that are right for them and for their business. So I really like what you're saying here. So very much about creating spaces and, and, and different um, different opportunities for people to, to, to take on different, uh, to digest different formats of education. That's of course great to make that accessible in that way for the wider community. In terms of the, the world we're facing, I think that when we talk about the changes that are coming and the changes that are happening right now, or like, you know, future now, future yesterday, basically, um, I think one of the greatest maybe fears or the, the, the changes that we, we tend to freeze facing it um, are the digitalization changes. So the changes that are brought in by technology. Um, the question here is, What's Scotland's position there? Is Scotland an early adopter? Is Scotland an innovator? Um, in, in Scotland's history, actually, there have been many inventors. It, it used to be a huge leader in, in the industrial times, and even before that, used to invent things that are, that are still use, in use today. Um, where do you think Scotland will position itself, and what is the role of family businesses in, in fostering innovation in technology and digitalization? Absolutely. Um, and th th there's so much there. I mean, historically, you're absolutely right. Scotland has played a major ro world role in terms of inventions, in terms of technology, in terms of development. And many of our universities, particularly around the science, technology, engineering and maths, the STEM subjects as we know them, they continue to be at the forefront of international developments in technology. In terms of family business... I find it helpful to think of innovation in two broad groups because we have the very technical innovation that comes from science, technology, engineering and maths and we have service innovation which is probably more where Queen Margaret University focuses. So we have different universities doing different things and both that, the technological innovation and the service innovation feeds out to the family business community. So if you like, we have a body of university knowledge that contributes to innovation and in parallel we have family businesses out there innovating on their own behalf and very much applying both the general principles and specific ideas that they have and that to me is part of the delight of working in family business is that I get to cross across those different worlds from technological and service innovation in the university sector all the way out to uh, individual businesses creating value and building a new future through their own innovation. Fantastic. Last question. What do you feel, Claire, um, are the biggest priorities family businesses should set in their development in order to face, as we you know, set uncertainty, but also set opportunities? What, where do you think the family should start? Are there like three points where you're like, okay, you really need to get those things in line now in order to be able to face whatever is coming? Do you have those points in, in your mind right now? Absolutely. I, I tend to think of it as two major strands that intertwine. The first um, is the business, the business itself, the innovation, the vision for the future, the strategy that that business is following. That has to be there because at the end of the day, they are family businesses, but they are businesses. And then in parallel with that, you have the family strand. So you have all the bit about Succession, yes, but succession is the end point of putting successful governance processes in place. So it's about all sorts of things, everything from family council through to formalised ownership structures through to education for the next generation. And it's actually, I mean, it's quite interesting that you should ask that question because when we were putting together the master's programmes in family businesses, that was very much the philosophy that we chose, mm -hmm. that for a programme like the MBA, they would study some subjects with the main MBA cohort because things like 
finance, marketing, strategy. Family businesses need those. They need those because they are, after all, a business. And then in parallel with that, you need the education specifically designed for family business, specifically designed to look at things like governance structures and to help them find good routes forward for individual family businesses because families vary a lot and thus so do the family businesses. Fantastic, Claire. Thank you so much for having us here today. Uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to getting to know more about your research as the years, uh, as the years pass and uh, thanks for speaking to our listeners. It's been a pleasure. pleasure.